everyone. It's Sunday once again, um, and it's now two o'clock. Well, it's still so <laughs> like one minute to two, but it, I thought it was so like start early. So it's two o'clock in the UK, and welcome to another episode of Ask the Drummer. And I would like to dedicate this episode actually to um, Craig Gill, the drummer of Inspiral Carpets, because um, who's sadly not here with us anymore, but it would have been his 50th birthday today. So um, yeah, this is this one's for him. But anyways, um, I'm going to bring in my guest now because I'm just really excited to talk to him, to have a chat with him. And I'm sure you're all excited to hear him as well. So my dear friends, please welcome many drummer, many drummers, so like uh, regardless, their drumming hero. So please welcome Mr. Stephen Morris of New Order. And join us as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Hello. New Order. <laughs> yeah. Various um, yeah. fans. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, all right. Fans, I'm, yeah. I, I'm, f- I'm fine. Are you okay? Yeah, it, it's cold. Very cold. Yes, yes. It's it's yeah. God's way of telling you it's nearly Christmas. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> well I've got to say, um, you're... This is so good because... Um, we're... we're Craig Gill, you know, being his 50th sort like yeah, the, the, I thought I would sort of like dedicate this one. And no, he, no, shortly um, before he left this planet, it was sometime in the summer, he actually took a photo of me on the Joy Division bridge in you. Oh, right, Cause, right. Yeah, because he used to do um, sort of like a Manchester music tours. He did tours, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and one of them is the Joy Division New Order one. And he said, that he's going to be where Kevin Cummins was, you know, the position, the location where Kevin Cummins was, was when he was taking the photograph of Joy, that iconic photo of Joy Division. So I just thought, you know, that was just a really good of him to do that. And then not long after, like a few months later, you know, so he left, he left the planet. It's just really sad. But yeah. anyways, um, uh, speaking of Kevin Cummins, you did a talk with Kevin Cummins last week in uh, Walthamstow. Walthamstow, that's right. Yes, yeah. after forty yeah. years away, I finally returned to Walthamstow with Kevin. Yeah, that's that's the home of East Seventeen. <laughs> do you remember them? I do remember <laughs> East Seventeen. Yeah, I, but, I remember the dog track as well, but yeah, that's not as popular as East Seventeen. Track. Um, also, um, next week you're going to do a talk with Dave Haslam That's uh, right. in Halifax. But mm-hmm. today you're here on Ask the Drummer. And yes. I've got to say, this is a testament to your awesomeness, not just as a drummer, but as a human being. Because, <laughs> I mean, I can't believe this actually, that you're very good with fans. You, you, know, you always have time for the fans. And, yeah, um, I, I do. I do. Very, there's yeah. one exception. When I, I, I went for my booster vaccination the, the other day and went in and, and, and I sat down and I spoke, you're Steve Morris, aren't you? I said, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. What do you say when you're waiting to get a needle stuck in your arm? I don't know. I, that's well, never that's happens. What... <laughs> so I apologise. Well, I apologise if I seemed a little bit terse, but there's a new just had yeah, there's a new one on me. Well, there's one thing I would want, really wanted to ask you is, you know, because uh, I consider myself a fangirl, because um, it, and if I were to write the sort like the do's and don'ts of fangirl or fanboying, is there something that you or let's say musicians um, in general? that fans shouldn't do or fans should really try and avoid doing? Or are you, because you seem to be genuinely happy to do like people asking you for photographs and signatures and stuff. But is there yeah. something that, you know? Yeah, well, usually here's one bit of advice. Never start a conversation with, you're not as good as you used to be, no matter how true that might be. <laughs> It kind of <laughs> doesn't endear you. Well, no one said that to you, though. No. Not recently, no. no. <laughs> but, 
it has wait. been it has been said it has been said so try and avoid <laughs> that one just if you're just nice and then people tend to be nice back oh that's good well all right well hello stephen morris well um welcome to ask the drummer ask uh, away. yep episode 18 is all about you okay but before i actually start asking you the questions i just want to say hello to everyone who joined this live this Adele Marie, they, Adele is actually my daughter and she's leads, she's in Leeds at the moment. So she's joined us. Um, Trevor Palmer, Rowan um, is your biggest fan, Filipino <gasps> fan in New York. <laughs> He's in I New know. York at the moment. Uh, Neil Barker, who's my colleague at King B Records. Um, Jessel Baltazar from Canada. Um, and Rob Jones. Rob is the drummer of the High Five and yes. Wahid and John Kidd, um, all, they all sort of like joined us live today. But so uh, yeah. we're going to start from the very beginning. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, New Order, uh, uh, New Order, Joy Division, they're considered as sort of like, um, from a non-British point of view, it's like when you think of Manchester, Manchester music, it's always so sort of like, I'd say the big five, you know, New Order, The Smiths, The Stone Roses, Oasis, Happy Mondays. Um, like when you go to, um, say, a bar in, in the Philippines and it's like a Manchester theme one, you'll always see photos of you and stuff. But um, none of you are actually born in Manchester. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. <laughs> Bernard and Hockey are from Salford, which is Salford. very, very distinct from Manchester. Um, yeah. And myself, actually, no, it's not true because Gillian was born in Manchester. Oh, really? Yes. I was, oh, right. She's the only one who She's was the actually. Only one, was that? Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. I thought she was also from Macclesfield. That's no, so no. They, uh, Jimmy's parents um, did a runner from uh, Wally Range in the 60s. But she was, yeah, she, she was born in, uh, born in Manchester. Oh, right. So um, what was it like um, growing up in oh, Macclesfield? Oh, was she? Actually, you've got me thinking now. Maybe she was. <laughs> it, it's a good story. It's a good story. But yeah, but me, me and Ian were from Macclesfield, definitely. Uh, so, um, what when you're like uh, going out or teenagers, is there like a music scene in Macclesfield or? Um, phew, the what the the wasn't the wasn't. Um, no, not really. I mean, if you wanted the music scene, you had to go to Manchester, which was like. Um, difficult when you couldn't drive you had to get the train in and uh yeah you just everything happened in manchester which is kind of where you the association mystic came from because you, that was where you spent all your time uh once you got yeah. into music um i mean there had been uh a bit of a music scene here in the 60s the beatles actually played uh macclesfield oh did they uh, Yes, the car broke down in Chestergate. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they ever came back. Yeah, they used to have a club, um, the El Rio, that, that was on the circuit in the 60s. But that, by the time I was born, that was sort of like out. Yeah, no, none of that. We don't have any of that music business thing going on here. Um, even jukeboxes uh, yeah. sometimes banned if you put it on people. Well, depending on the record, the publican would turn well, he'd turn all my records down anyway. So, um, yeah, it was a bit That's... of a desert. In fact, Macclesfield was, uh, for a while, referred to, I think it was a tele by the Daily Telegraph, as a cultural black hole, uh, which it's striving, it's striving to get away from that now. <laughs> but do you have, like, music venues there now in Macclesfield? Yeah, there like... are now. Yeah, there are now. It's a lot better now. It's a lot better yeah, now. Yeah. My, daughter, my daughter's in a band and she plays there's places to play. But when I was growing up, there was nothing, yeah. nothing really. You yeah, just had to go and uh, seek it out in uh, Manchester. In Manchester. Which was, yeah, which was good because you had to you know, do a bit of work. 
Yeah, so um, you've known Ian Curtis since you were like young kids? No. Or, no, <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> we, we, we should have done. We were at the same school. Uh, Ian was a year above me. Uh, and it seems really bizarre that, but we never met. We never, never actually, our paths never crossed. And it's like, I, I thought, I'm the only kid in this school who likes the Velvet Underground and Iggy and everything like that. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm just an outsider. But there, there was Ian. Um, I don't know why that happened. Um, but we, yeah, just never did, never did. I, yeah. was sort of, I was going off the rails really because I was, I was thrown out of that school for uh, overindulging in uh, various things. Cough medicine was one of them. Um, <laughs> Wait, which school was that? In, was, in Macclesfield? Yeah, yeah, the King's School in Macclesfield. King's School was, was a grammar school. God knows how I got in a grammar yeah. school. Um, yeah. But I didn't, yeah, I was I removed quickly, but um, Ian went the course and he, he got qualifications. Um, I just got a very bad reputation. <laughs> um, I've read, um, some, well, it's it's on Wikipedia, actually. That, um... that's, not, that's not true. Though. <laughs> Go on, what? <laughs> on Wikipedia, that, um, you told your father or your dad that you wanted to be a drummer yeah and but um what what and and they, apparently he didn't approve no he didn't no see my dad my dad was he was always into music like the the, the father's family uh yeah. were very musically orientated uh particularly my uncle johnny was in in a band he played saxophone clarinet all that sort of stuff and my dad used to put on dances at the town hall um and yeah, yeah he, he was he, he was yeah big jazz family like duke ellington count basie people like that and he his big thing when i was a kid was that i should learn to play a musical instrument um yeah yeah but that musical yeah. instrument turned out to be the clarinet and it's like oh. <laughs> no no i don't want to do that so it's kind of like no because because your parents want you to do something you automatically no, it's a bad idea. So I, yeah, I did. I, I mean, I tried, but I was awful. I was awful. Um, it's funny. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And it was it was just late later on when I when I started getting into music myself um, that I, I I couldn't play the guitar. I tried playing the guitar, and then I, I was the worst guitarist in this band. So it's one of the rules of rock and roll that the worst guitarist becomes the drummer. So that's <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> well, um, you're known for your precise drumming yeah. and machine like machine like <laughs> skills. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, did you have any drumming lessons at all, or were you self-taught? <laughs> no, that's one of the things you see. <laughs> when it when it when, uh, there's terms and conditions attached when you get approach your father and tell him you want to play the drums and it's like you, you've got to have lessons uh, so it's like the parry that knowing that i was like very anti-education he thought i'd bark at the fact that i'd have to learn anything uh but i, I wanted to do it so much i said yeah okay um so yeah i had lessons which were a lot of fun they were a lot of fun um, yeah, yeah. It was it was much more enjoyable than trying to get your fingers to do a chord, uh, <laughs> which I still can't do. Um, no, I, it was very very interesting. David Greenwood, his name was. He did, played for the Halle Orchestra, and we just used to have a a laugh. Really. He, oh, you know, right. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't I don't I don't actually think I learnt that much. Uh, <laughs> But we, we we had a lot of fun and we smoked a lot of cigarettes uh, <laughs> and talked a lot about music and yeah. it, it was it was great it was great I learned I, I learned a lot about music but not so much about playing the drums. Yeah. 
Well, it's funny that you mentioned clarinet because last night I went to a get together for Gone Eighty sort of like thing, and someone was sort of like asking, "Was there ever a pop song with a clarinet?" Uh, yeah. And no one, no one could think of it. <laughs> so Stra like... Stranger on the Shore by Akabilk. <laughs> which which one? Stranger on the Shore by Akabilk. All oh, right. Before well, there you go. your time. <laughs> There you go. I, re <laughs> I remember it well. It was haunting. Oh, right. it's a well, theme tune. Um, before we continue, well, more people saw like join the slide. There's Jenny, she's in Burnage. Um, Aiden Burnage, yeah. <laughs> Aiden is actually my husband, and he said that um, he saw Joy Division at the Russell Club in 1979. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, regulars there. <laughs> Guy Keegan is the drummer of, of the Railway Children, and he's in Wigan. Um, right. Spence Roberts, he said that he met you, a lovely guy, inspirational musician, and he loves his book, uh, your book, sorry. And um, yes, so, um, right, we've got questions here, but um, we'll, we'll talk about your, um, your drumming first. So, um, and did you ever have so like any other band before Joy Division or? Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I tried to get in a lot of bands, uh, but <laughs> I I was a very good audition failure. <laughs> um, I I wasn't quite what they were looking for uh, because I I kind of um, I knew this other guy, uh, this guy Phil 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 yeah. Swindles. He was a great drummer. And he it, like he could play anything, and he could, he could do cabaret and all this lot. And um, unfortunately, I, I, I can kind of do one thing. I, well, at the time, I could do one thing, and it was it was none of that. Uh, so we say, <laughs> so we say, oh no, I've got I can't do this gig tonight. Do you want to do it? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. It's kind of no, no, don't send him again. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, my first, my first gig was um, doing cabaret in uh, a pub in Leek, um, and it was a chicken in the basket affair. If you know what, if you know what that means, you've just played. And it's like, have you got any brushes? And it's like brushes. What the hell's that about? And uh, I'm trying to play Tago Mago. Something from Tago Omega, and they want me to play Tire Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak. It was never going to work, really. <laughs> Just a, Doug and Dave with the piano and a string bass. Um, yeah. No. Um, Do yeah. you still? Are you still in touch with these people who actually turned I, you I, down? I, no, no. They, they've <laughs> all they've all passed on to the musical oh. heaven. Um, oh. And I was in a folk band for a bit. Um, which I was, I wasn't too bad at that. Um, yeah, we did. I think we might have done one gig and tried to make one record. And yeah. uh, what's it called? What's the band called? <laughs> do, do you know what? I, I, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in my book. It's absolutely awful. I can't remember. I, <laughs> and I, asked, I asked people. I said, do you remember that band I used to be in? And they just go, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we used to rehearse at the little theatre. In, in, no, I don't remember that. But I can remember <laughs> being in the band. I can remember who was in it. But I can't remember what the hell. It, well, probably the something something band, probably. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Well, um, Joy Division, uh, it, this is all, like, I think it's common knowledge that um, yes. it, it was formed um after bernard sumner and peter hope so like saw uh sex pistols gig sex at the lesson free trade hall mm. were you there did you no. go to that no no you didn't no it's a it's a big pub night that <laughs> in Mac. <laughs> no i didn't i mean I, I i tried to see the pistols later on but by that time they were kind of getting banned all over the place um no, I hold my hands up. I say I wasn't there. Um, oh right, because I well, it says 
only 40 people actually went in there, but it's yeah. like 40,000 40, people have claimed it was so like that yeah. they have been there. It's You'd like... never get them in unless a three shade hall. It's only tiny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I wasn't there. So I, I heard the bootleg. I've got the boot. Oh, now my cat's here. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> Is that okay? It's, oh, it's, oh, it's so cute. Hello. Right. Neil Barker, my, my colleague at King B, he'd like yeah. it because he likes cats. Yeah, well, so that's um, called Dexter. Yeah, well, okay, we've got this question here. Um, Come on, so question. John, <laughs> John Kidd uh, said, what did you think of Martin Hamnett when he asked you to record his drums for Unknown Flashes? Genius or lunatic? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mark, Mark, I, I like Martin because he was a man after my own heart. He was, he was a bit of an old hippie, and I was. Um, he looked very much like Tom Baker era Doctor Who, uh, I, and he smoked a lot of dope. So we had, <laughs> right, we had a lot in common. Um, <laughs> and I, what did I think? Well, I didn't. Now, one thing about Martin, he wasn't very good at communicating with you. That was part of his thing. He wasn't, he, I don't think he wanted to influence you too much. He just wanted you to do what he wanted to do. He uh -huh. wanted you to do, but he wouldn't actually tell you what that was. So it was kind of like, sort of like Zen yeah. torture, I think. <laughs> And I, I just thought, yeah, I, I just have to do each drum. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do the bass drum and do the snare drum, which is kind of like Clem Burke had done the similar sort of thing on Heart of Glass. So it was like it was becoming a thing, but he never told me that. Um, I, I just thought it was because I was a really, really crap drummer. And I had to do <laughs> this was my, my punishment. was. <laughs> Was tormented by Martin Hannah. Uh, it was. It was good. It was good because it was like an experiment, and it was like I, I you know, I learned a lot, uh, yeah. and yeah. I, I suffered a lot as well, um, but mostly from bruises because you get you sort of like you instinctively play the other drum, but there's nothing to hit, so you end up hitting your knee or your arm or something. So I'd go home. Covered in bruises. Um, he was all right. He was he was okay, um, but he was very uh, what's the word eccentric. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it was, it, what he did with Joy Division, I thought was fantastic. It was really good because he could get he like unknown pleasures. It's like in a world of its own. Yeah. And if, yeah. if we'd have done it. It, just it wouldn't, wouldn't have, have like had, him. yeah. No, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't have had the like same effect. Like no. Yeah. And Unknown Pleasures was recorded in Stockport, the Strawberry yeah. Studio. That's that's where I am now in Stockport. That's why I really like this. <laughs> I yeah. really like this place. Um, right, um, also, you're, you're, you're not really the original. Apparently, you're not the original um, Joy Division drummer. No, they weren't not, Joy Warsaw. Division. It was Warsaw. Warsaw. It was Warsaw, yeah. yeah. No, know, I wasn't. You were their fourth drummer, I believe. Depends. The... <laughs> fourth, fifth. Drummers tend to be serial items, I've found. It's kind of like, you know, there's always a number of drummers in the, the, yeah. that, that, that you don't really get the same thing with guitarists or whatever, but there's always serial drummers. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I, I was. Yeah. I basically, basically, I got the gig because I lived in Macclesfield and had a car uh, and so I could take Ian. So that was kind of... Yeah, because yeah, cause Ian was there. Um, they really liked Ian Curtis and they were um, he was mm. the, the singer. And because yeah. you're also from Macclesfield and stuff. Mm. Um, right. Um, a friend of mine, Simon Chung, who he's from Leeds, he also wanted me to ask you about your Roland Octopad. Because he said that he had one of those. And he was really happy that I think you like that Roland Octopod. Uh, I don't know what that is, but it's like, is it like a drum kit or a drum machine or something? It was, it was the original, it was a MIDI trigger pad, Roland Octopod. He had eight eight pads and you could 
And you yeah. hooked, it up, hooked up to your sampler, Mackay sampler, and triggered samples. Um, yeah. And I think that there was one of them that actually had some sounds in it as well, but I, I, I can't remember if I ever used any of them. No, I just used samples. Have you still got it? Have you still got that one, or is it gone uh, to auction? No, <laughs> no that, that's gone with Doug and Dave. It's gone to <laughs> musical instrument heaven. Yeah. Um, but this is actually when I was um, doing a bit of research, well, online or Googling yeah. online. <laughs> um, it says there's one newspaper article that says that your first gig um, in Warsaw, so yes. like being the drummer of Warsaw, um, was at Eric's. Um, in yes, that's Liverpool. right. Yeah, it was in, in Liverpool. It was right. a, mat a matinee gig. Uh, uh, God, was it? Oh, hell, was it in 1977 or something. Yeah, that's but, right. But, yeah, but the confusion was like there's another article that's saying that you didn't actually also didn't actually play it was generation x so i was all like wondering no it was, was that was a no it's the wrong day oh god I was <laughs> i'm trying about was it x-ray specs because what they did at eric's uh was to do roger it was roger eagle who put us on and you do a matinee yeah. and uh, at the matinee, you'd go on first, the traditional thing. It, it, so, so kids could see bands. And we, we went yeah, on first. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think it was X Ray Specs, they went on. And uh, we thought we'd, it might let us play the later set, but we didn't didn't get the later set. Um, so, But he said, Roger said, oh, you're really good. You can come, <coughs> you can come back and play again play sometimes yeah yeah so yeah. The, the, the the thing that really annoyed a lot of the bands was if you went on first say if you were the support band for the matinee you had to go on last at the uh, at night which all oh, right okay yeah, which yeah. really annoyed a lot of people it's kind of like but, but why why is this band of no hopers going on after <laughs> us and, well, you know, when there's I, a lot of arguments about that. Who yeah. goes on last? Well, I, when I went to see um, uh, Will Sargent in Liverpool doing one of these talks, he yeah. actually mentioned it. I mean, I'm not quoting him on this, but he did. Um, it from what I understood that you were you were at Eric's as well, so, but it didn't actually make quite a big impact but then when you return to eric's as uh, joy division that's when everyone just went whoa you know this bad is <laughs> like so what would you say is all sort of like the um, most significant so sort of like change apart from the name from you know, war so into joy division uh we've written a lot of better songs that was that was, all, <laughs> yeah. that was the big difference but that was only like a matter of months, right? So um, yeah, yeah. It like, no, it's a, yeah. it's amazing the t the time scale of that. Joy Division had the whole thing was like really, really, like tightly compressed. It's like in yeah. my mind, it was like months and months, but it was like weeks, because um, we were re we were like really rehearsing and writing stuff. Uh, get, you know, like you go twice a week, we do. Wednesday night and all day Sunday and we're just writing all the time and once you get on a bit of a roll which is what happens of writing songs like one thing leads to another leads to another leads to another and you just get better at it and that's what happened so by the time we got a gig as Joy Division we kind of had a completely new set and um, people were like yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's what I saw, like, understood from what Will Sargent was saying, that, yeah. you know, when you came on as Joy Division, that everybody was just really amazed, and, you know. We yeah, because well, we started off, I mean, I think the first song, well, it was the first song that we wrote with them, was um, Living in the Ice Age, which is the boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, 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 which is all kind of, like, quite, quite punky and thrashy, but the, yeah. the things sort of, like, stopped being thrashy and got more... Um, it's a word abstract, sort of like angular rhythms and things. 
Yeah. Uh, and it became more tuneful. And there was a, there a lot of a lot of air crept into it, and it was kind of instead of everyone going, yeah, you know, there was like <laughs> became a lot sparser, a lot sparser. Right. Um. Um. You also toured with bus cops because um one of our <laughs> friends, Alan Morrison, uh, wanted me to ask you of your memories of being on the bus cops tour and also all that spitting. Apparently, there was like all that. <laughs> well, there, there were yeah there were there were a couple of occasions uh you forget about it now when gobbin uh yeah where was it was it oh god i can remember one where it, it we just got gobbed up like <laughs> but uh, um um i've seen this sort of like um um documentary before where um joe strummer was saying that that's actually how they tell you that they love you is yeah that was yes yeah. it was supposed to be a sign of appreciation yeah uh, but yeah. no one would do that now it was like oh my god no no <laughs> no health and safety would intervene quite early on yeah. <laughs> yeah. so did you get any of that at all when you were now, so... one of the good things about but well i did actually i did <laughs> for a long time it might yeah. still be there because i've still got the symbol there was a big streak of gob on uh, <laughs> one of the crash symbols and it sort of like went a very funny color just in this area <laughs> and i think there's probably still a stain to this day it refused to come out but no <laughs> No, I was, I was, that's what the symbols were for, you see. Just, oh, yeah, that's um, I only ever hit one of them, but the rest were just to keep the gob off. <laughs> right. I've also got another sort of like question from, um, this one is from, he, um, the drummer of Big Red Boss in the 80s, but he's now in Ginnell. Um, Roland Jones is also known as Scrub. He's known as Scrub. Um, and he, he was on Ask the Drummer before, and he, said that you're one of his um, drumming heroes so oh, but he yeah but he wanted me to ask you do you remember the preston warehouse gig yes. where the amps and pa oh. blew up and <laughs> no, no they didn't blow up do you want me to tell you what happened yeah right? please do. okay <laughs> preston warehouse which is actually the, the, uh, it's a really good gig um but what happened was our road manager, Terry, Terry Mason, had acquired a pair of ski boots. Now, I don't know if you, you probably, do you remember ski boots? They were kind of like knee high and they were quite hairy. You looked like, um, what did you call it? A centaur. They had very, they were hairy, big right. yeah. boots. Very, yeah. Yeah. The, the, I have to emphasize the largeness of these boots. Terry was wearing, and he was behind. We were behind us, fettling about like a uh, roady thing. And what 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 happens? One of the amps went off, and he's all, "Oh, go off we'll to play everything, everything in Barney's amp." And then he'd go over, and everybody plugged into Barney's amp. Oh, it's all right. All right, all right. Then Barney's amp went off, and what was happening is while he was scuttling about from amp to amp, his very large boots catching in the mains cables and yanking them out so what 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 what's that when you listen to it what sounds like a chain of sort of like apocalyptic disaster of, yeah this amp's not working this amp's not working and now that amp's not working was his attempts to repair the situation but in attempting to repair it he was actually making it, it worse, make it worse. Yeah, well, Scrub was saying that it was chaos. It was. <laughs> and then the bus is leaving, the bus is leaving. <laughs> God, press the warehouse. Um, I, 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 it's, it's, it's a great bootleg. It's a, it's really good. It's not a bootleg. It's, it's a semi-official bootleg. Um, <laughs> but it's a catalogue of, um, yeah, errors. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and when well, I listen, to, when I listen to it, I, I I can I can just sort of out of the corner of my eye yeah. see Terry it's scuttling about behind me, going, <laughs> and anyway, yeah, 
with his ski boots, ski it was boots. like hairy ski boots. <laughs> well, I think that's one thing that maybe um um what do you call them the the tech the sound tech people that yeah. shouldn't be wearing they shouldn't be wearing ski no. boots when they're no. doing those. No, it's on, it's on the rider now. We can no no ski boots allowed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, John Kidd said, um, do you still have the drum kit that was used on Unknown Pleasures? Or is it ah. in some museum somewhere? <laughs> the one, no. I'll the, the one that was used on Unknown Pleasures, let's see what happened to that. Donald out of ACR oh, yeah, yeah. got the bass drum, which was, uh, that was a very bad idea, that, because it was a brilliant bass. It was an old Heyman bass drum. Um, the rest of it, kind of got trashed in a when an Arctic rammed into the back of the transit on the M1. Uh, but I have still got one um, one floor it's, tom it's, oh, which, right. which did every gig from that was from Warsaw all the way through to I think he used it on close as well. I've still got one drum left. It still sounds great. But the rest of it either got wrecked, um, given away, or stolen. And I had a great ride symbol, um, which was an old jazz one from the sort of nineteen twenties jazz kit, and somebody nicked it. No, I, I never got it back. No, you never got it. No, no. no. <laughs> oh dear. Wonder if it's still so like out there and just. No, like... I'd recognise it if I saw it again. Because it's, 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 it was a really weird looking symbol. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say hello uh, as well to Mike Edmondson who's joined us, and oh, Ro Roel Marasigan from Detroit. Um, so he's um, he's saying that hope to see you this side of the pond sometime soon. So he's in yeah. Detroit at the moment. Yeah. So after um, Joy Division um because when i've i've seen you saw like do your talks before and then um on both occasions that i've seen you do it i could feel the sadness and yeah uh, the, the hurt and anger oh yeah when you talk about you know like ian curtis and and stuff but um at least you know when when well when he so like when he decides so like leave this planet I don't, I don't like saying so like this like then yeah. um you carried on as um new order mm -hmm. and um i didn't know this but um you were actually doing some singing <laughs> some singing in the early <laughs> in the early days yes. i think all i think all of you did i think all the um the new order that. singing competition <laughs> yeah because um well, we've got someone who's like um, uh, he's a regular customer of King B King B Records. He comes in every Saturday morning. He's always there early. Who's he's a massive fan of Joy Division New Order, and he actually yeah. he's he told me about you know you singing in the early days, and he said <laughs> and he said that it's actually his favorite time. So I just wanted to say hello to Roddy. <laughs> I wanted to say hello to Roddy. Unfortunately, he's not on Facebook. Um, so he's looking forward to watching this on YouTube. So okay. hello, Roddy. Yeah, so, uh, but um, Alan McLeod, um, who's from Mac, uh, the Mac Scotland uh, Productions, he actually shared a YouTube video of you singing. Thanks. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> no, have you seen it? It's not really good. It's appalling. So, so it was like um, a decision that uh, is it like you all decided that it's uh, Bernard Sumner is going to be carrying on doing the singing for New it Order. Was, yeah, process of elimination, really. That. Um, Singing, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't sing and drum. But I couldn't sing anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, and it somehow <laughs> fell to Bernard. He, and he, he ended up doing it all. Uh, but Hockey, Hockey did a couple on movement. Yeah, yeah. But I did nothing. I mean, I, no. 
But it, I still had to play the keyboards, though. I thought I got out playing the keyboards, but. <laughs> I, well, thank heaven so you actually just play the drums because I would be I would have been sort of like talking to somebody else if you <laughs> if you, you didn't sort of like do the drums and stuff. But um, Jessel in Canada, he said uh, when I first heard New Order. Um, I thought it was like Crash. Thought, right, again, when I first heard New Order, I thought Crash was synthesizers. Then when I saw a video of you drumming so fast with all the fast beats and hi-hats, uh, he said that he was amazed. Uh, how did you come up with those amazing fast drumming for your songs? Panic. And what were your inspiration? <laughs> Fear. Fear. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> I don't know. It just sort of became a competition with myself to just to, 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 to play fast but simple. Because um, in, in Joy Division, I played a lot of um, Tom Tom things, like the riffs were sort of like, there's a lot of jungly drums because Ian liked that. And um, when we started doing New Order, I thought, well, yeah, I'll do something different and I'll kind of try and stop doing that, um, which is a bit hard. It was kind of like, because that's how you went about writing. Um, so I ended up doing this very simple thing, but it's it seemed like I wasn't doing very much. So I just I did it very fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, the fast, no, actually, that's not true. The fast... The, 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 the fast, the fast beat thing started with uh, Joy Division with Transmission. Um, that was like, the, the, I really like. There's a, there's a YouTube video done with Lego of uh, Joy Division doing Transmission, and I think that's great. Yeah. Sorry. The Lego <laughs> drummer. <laughs> I have to sort of check that out. I don't think I've yeah, seen, I've seen that. it. That's check. great. It's really fun. Yeah. It's really fun. I'll check that out. Um, yeah. Also, what is you know, want to say hello to um, um, Jonathan Preston, uh, Gilbert No Chan. Gilbert is in Manila. He's watching us now. And Hi. Tiffany Goldbranson. Uh, hello. And thank you so much for joining us live. Um, so personally speaking, um, I mean, me as a teenager in the Philippines, um, I was... I became aware more of New Order before Joy Division. Um, I was really sort of like into New Order first, but I think um, there's a radio station, there's a radio station in the Philippines that then played Love Will Tear Us Apart and mm -hmm. um, Atmosphere. But at the time, those were the only two Joy Division yeah. songs um, that, I knew, that I knew of. But um new order was just so like incredible it, it was just you were massive um in the philippines and for me it was love vigilantes that right. actually that i really like first i i find that song um it, it's sad because of the story but then of course you can still dance to it as well but then you're thinking like especially when you're coming to the part where you say that and i'm i'm dead you know, so like, and you were dancing yeah. to it, it was not like, but then i was dead and i just yeah. thought oh, god dude this song is meant. but then there's another one which is part of the um soundtrack of um pretty in pink that's also a massive song well so like massive hit in the philippines it's shell shock really yeah well you that's... couldn't get two more different songs if you tried could you <laughs> but um well shell shock we didn't have when i was young in the philippines so that's the shell shock one yeah that that's there. it yeah and uh this one is the inner the inner yeah. sleeve um when i was young it's only the rich people the rich kids who can afford records and um we couldn't really get these um, unless you know, you know someone from abroad, say from America or the UK. But now I'm actually sort of like into collecting records. And I, I, what I wanted to ask you is this here, which is one, four, three. three yes. Written on the inner sleeve. Yes. Now it, this might be silly for us, you know, especially since this is my most favorite sort of like yeah. new order song. Yeah. Um, when I was young. Uh, when I was a teenager in the Philippines, 
and one four three actually mean means like um i love you <laughs> so it's like i and then the love is like four letters oh and yeah you, yeah and i don't know it's probably silly but i just wanted to ask what was the one four three four is, is that not the catalog number um what oh, it is in the catalog so i'm like i might be just have a look is it fact one four three if it isn't it's just a it's just a it's just some numbers it's just some random numbers. Oh, I, could, I should have known that. Just have, have see, what, see what the number is. Oh, yeah, that's it. right. Yeah, it is so sort of like fact one, four, three. But it just so happened. Yeah, that you're. <laughs> it just so happens that this is actually, if you're like a teenager and you're quite shy or coy yeah. and you didn't want to tell, you know, like I love. You I know song, what you mean. Yes. <laughs> you can actually sort of like just teenage say, code. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, and you could even say one four three four four, which is like I love you very much. <laughs> so like, which is again <laughs> we didn't get that one in Mac. You didn't get that one. No. But, but just, now I know. I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. In the yeah. <laughs> I know it is. I know it's silly, Robots, but I just yeah. that number is just always always strikes me because I've always so like like that code that one four three <laughs> well, we say we knew we knew none of this you tell it you say you were really big in the philippines we I, I have absolutely no idea we had no idea that people in the philippines had even heard of us um oh yeah you're, you're massive oh my god but have you have you ever played in southeast asia or... yeah but just recently we have yeah um we did. We played Hong Kong once. Uh, that was the first one that we did, and then just recently, we've done the Hong Kong again, Singapore. Uh, no, we haven't really, have we? We've never actually been to the Philippines. We haven't been to the. Well, no. I know Bernard Sumner's been to the Philippines with Johnny Mark. Cause, uh, um, yeah, on a holiday stroke video shoot. Video, yeah. They did yeah. a video for um, Electronics Get the Message. That's right, and, yes. Yeah. yeah, so um, it would be great. I'm sure the Filipino fans would I'm love sure. New Order to sort of like go to the Philippines and play there. Right, hang on. I'll make you know a note. Of, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> So that's the Philippines, <laughs> Glasgow, and Norwich. <laughs> right, I'm sure, we can put a tour together there. <laughs> well, um, what was so uh, like the um, furthest um, you have know, like you saw then? So sort of, like, because you go, you go, did you go to America? Well, well, obviously you go to America a lot and yeah. South America and yeah. That became that was a thing. When did that start? In the eighties. I mean, the thing the thing about America was in the early days, it was great playing America because nobody had really heard of Joy Division. Uh, yeah, over here it was like, oh, everyone knew who Joy Division was. It was like, yeah, it's New Order. It used to be, used to be Joy Division, but there was none of that um, when you went to the states in the eighties, and you got just got a load of young people coming to see you, and the, it gradually grew and grew. Uh, and like then people discovered the joy division were later on but the, yeah. it, initially it was it was just because you didn't get asked about Ian, really yeah um, yeah it's the same with us because it's like we know about the new order but later on we then so like got to hear about mm -hmm. joy division and i think um one of my friends actually said that um the impact of joy division uh, for him is actually more than new order mm. which is i mean coming from a filipino it's a bit so like different because i knew that uh, we we loved new order before or i could be wrong it could be just me but you know for me i just think it's new order first because mm. uh, because of the american influence and like yeah, i said it's possibly because yeah of, yeah because of pretty and pink as well you know so um yeah, so, well, hopefully someday, I don't know if there's, because sometimes you do get so, like uh, promoters in the Philippines who watch, you know, podcasts like this. So well, any I'm, promoters <laughs> in the Philippines, you know, they'll, they I, could, I'm sure we'd love to go to the Philippines. It's 
it's sunny there, isn't it? It's warm. Yeah, it is, it's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's just it's one of the, one of those places like when you try and do uh, go that way. It's great, great to go. But you try and get a few other places to go to, and it's never never worked out. I mean, we're supposed to be going back um, to Japan, but kind of like with the COVID and everything, it's yeah. really difficult. But yeah, we'd like to go. I would anyway. <laughs> Philippines, <laughs> yeah. Japan, um, <laughs> Glasgow, Norwich. It's getting quite a few gigs. Glasgow, no. <laughs> um, Mike Edmonds has got a question for you. Uh, we want me to ask you when you first heard Sylvester and Donna Summer. Yeah. Um, well, I heard Donna Summer, obviously, when it first came out, I feel love in the 70s. Um, and it, it's just like one of those records you think, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, I wonder how they did that. I wonder how they did that. Sylvester, uh, kind of we picked up because when we were recording, um, as New Order in the early 80s, we got to London and a friend of ours uh managed Heaven, which was like a gay nightclub in uh, and it still is, uh, in in London and we just used to go there and you know, they just play all that high energy stuff like before yeah. anybody knew what high energy was and like it was like it's funny who's this guy it's St Sylvester and then he thought oh yeah I do actually vaguely I mean like you're real yeah um and that that's that it was going to clubs like that I was, just hearing loads of that stuff um it just it just sounded great because they had a brilliant sound system, uh, and it would just yeah, wouldn't it be good yeah. to do a record like this? Like, <laughs> um, Rowan Adrian, who's in New York now, I told you before, he's like the massive Filipino, biggest Filipino fan of New Order that I know of. Um, he actually said that Blue Monday and um, Bizarre Love Triangle cemented the Filipino love for New Order. See. So, yeah, for me, it's shell shock, but obviously. <laughs> so, well, you're writing the set list yeah. now, aren't you? Um, and again, Scrub, um, Roland Jones, he said, can you ask Stephen if he's involved in the songwriting process and does he write songs for yourself? Do you write songs for yourself? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I have done, yeah, uh, because I, I did, uh, they're not songs really. They have turn into songs because we did um, uh, music for TV and music for films, which is like when me and, me and Gillian did that. Um, and yeah, I write, write stuff. Yeah. And I, I wrote some lyrics. I wrote lyrics earlier on. Um, embarrassingly, I didn't actually get to sing them. I made Birders sing them. Um, yeah, so I do. It's kind of like, you know. It's good. Right, yeah, talk right, about, right, right. Well, talk right, about you good. and um, you and Jillian. You've got you also had this the other two. Yes. Yeah, um, and um, I don't know if this is so like just rumor. Uh, I don't you you know Alex, big Alex, Alex Stansko. Oh He's yes, actually, I know Alex. Yeah. Yeah, big guy. <laughs> he actually said to like me the way before, back. <laughs> that um one of your songs one of the other two um songs like tasty fish mm -hmm. um the name or oh, the name of that song is actually from a chippy just it's very Stockport. near me yeah. in Stockport, yeah, yeah it's on the main Stockport. drag just near the station well i hate to tell you this but it's gone no it's it gone. Dead. like when's it gone it was there the they've, last time it was in Stockport. no they've even removed the um the billboard design and everything because um i went there um two years we'll ago to, before... we'll have to change the title of the record now <laughs> <laughs> well two years ago before i went to see you in liverpool for your talk i actually went to tasty fish and spoke to the owner of it and i told him about you know how important this place is but he just didn't have a clue no, <laughs> no i can believe that it, it, it just didn't have a clue and he said who it was like i said well new order joy division and he said uh, i don't Never know heard of yeah. Them. yeah and i said to them this place is important that tasty fish 
it's a title of the song and it's yeah. and he said that he just haven't but he did say to me that he's struggling that yeah. it's probably yeah. just gonna be closing down anyways and then a few days ago when traveling wow. it back here i just realized that it's gone and i'm like no way <laughs> Oh God, that's another another <laughs> one gone. Oh wow. That's, that's depressed <laughs> me now. <laughs> I'm sorry, we I hope whoever owns whoever sort of like runs the chippy or I don't know whether it's gonna be the chippy again, but um whoever sort of like takes it. I can open my own now. I can <laughs> copyright the name and open the chain of tasty fish. <laughs> that was always the plan. <laughs> When times got hard so to branch out into <laughs> fish. <laughs> yeah. um, another um, another one that uh, another band that you were in, uh, well, New Order was sort of like having like a hate a hater spirit. Um, yeah. It's Bad Lieutenant. Yes. Yeah. Some drumming. Yeah. So can you tell us more about Bad Lieutenant because. Uh, <sighs> I've not well, really heard of this one before. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, well, it was it was Bernard, Phil, and Jake from. They're from Mackles. Well, Phil's in the order, and Jake was from Macclesfield. and um, it was it was them originally. I, I, I mean, at the time, I had pretensions of becoming a hot session drummer. Um, you know, drums for hire. That sort yeah, of thing. Right. <laughs> uh, and the only person who'd hire me was Bernard. <laughs> so I just ended up playing. I mean, they'd already done some. They'd, I think they'd done three quarters of the album. And they said, can you do some drums on this? So I did. Yeah. I think I did a couple of songs. And then Tom uh, was doing the bass. And I ended up. Um, just doing, just doing the touring band. But I, I think I did like a couple of songs on the album, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was about it. I mean, it was quite interesting. I enjoyed like going back playing little gigs again, yeah, yeah, and and stuff like that. But it was just very, very distressing that my attempt to become a hot shot <laughs> session drummer <laughs> ended, up, ended up back where I started. <laughs> <laughs> because you then reformed and um yeah yeah become about, about new order. yeah become new order <laughs> um, it was deja vu deja <laughs> uh, before i ask you say the next question um roel marasiga who's in detroit he said it's actually leave me alone uh it, what made him fall in love with new order leave me alone it's a great song it's a really love leave yeah. me alone so That's um and um Cesar Nosiliado, I think he's in Dubai, and he said that um, he saw you played in the Irish village in That's Dubai. That's right. Yes. And yes. Um, he had pictures with Gillian and Bernard, but uh, you weren't. I think you left. <laughs> I was very ill. I was ill. Um, oh. Yeah. yeah. Long story. Yeah. Long story. I. Oh, I right. I ate something I shouldn't have ate, Etten. Um, I was a bit poorly that, that guy. I remember it well, but not the oh, right Oh, right. Well, he said that he, um, he hopes that you return in Dubai soon. Okay. And he Give just wants Dubai, Philippines. <laughs> the Philippines. Philippines. Glasgow, Norwich. Glasgow, Norwich. Japan. <laughs> okay. All right. Shaping up. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, again, Alan McLeod of Max Scotland um, wanted me to ask you, when you reformed in 2012, mm -hmm. um, he said, why did you re revert back to an acoustic kit um, yeah. from an electronic kit? So. Uh, I'd given it a fair old crack of the whip. <laughs> I started using it, when was it? In the 90s, it was when V-Drums... Roland V drums first came out, and um, yeah, I gave it a go. I gave it a go. I thought I was being a pioneer again, uh, forgetting about 
the pitfalls of being a pioneer. Um, it's okay, but it didn't quite, it, we didn't work out, we didn't hit it off. I mean, they're great. Electronic drums are great for practicing on. They're great for playing like little gigs, really yeah. good. But the kind of, I, I just got very dissatisfied with the, with the fact that you have to change the way you play a bit. And it's more that they'd never get any louder, you know. You just go oh, loud and it doesn't work like that. Um, <laughs> no matter how hard I mean, it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, on the plus side, you can play thousands and thousands of sounds, but it's not, they're not quite, they, I mean, they have got a lot better. They have got a lot better. Um, and I, I kind of like found that I, I I reverted back to like having a bit of an electronic kit on some pads and like an electronic snare and yeah. triggers really i think uh, is it is better but you can't beat the feel of um real drums i mean that was the thing i, in, I remember in the 80s when i got the when the s simmons the sds5 came out and, oh god and like me and martin were really excited getting this sds5 and it's like it's like it keep breaking loads of sticks and then it's like my wrists really hurts because they were made out of stuff to make riot shields out of and it's like <laughs> no <laughs> no uh but i could you know persevere <laughs> with technology like you do yeah yeah it's one of the dangers of being an early adopter i mean i fall for it every time just like <laughs> this is new it's got to be good and <laughs> I just get this idea in my head of what it's going to be like. And it's just a fiction of concocting. And when I get the thing, it's just disappointment. Oh, From Just taking yeah. it out of the box. It's like, this doesn't work like how I thought it would. Um, <laughs> stick so to drums. Start... Stick to drums. No, yeah. no screws and washers and bits of plastic. What could go wrong? What could... <laughs> Um, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> it's, it's me again. Come like, for you. Yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier, like in the beginning, that uh, many drummers actually regard you as their drumming heroes. Um, this is actually one of the sort of like core questions I ask um, guests, and also Jenny also wanted to know: um, Do you have any um, drumming heroes yourself, or drummers oh, that you do you like? God, yeah. Um, well, Jackie, Jackie out of Can, like he's he's just absolutely brilliant. It's it's like listening to Can records, and um, also Noi uh, Klaus out of Noi. I mean, listening to those two, both German drummers, are kind of like where I, I got my style from. Um, <laughs> also, uh, I mean Keith Moon, because it's just such yeah, you know, it's just it's just madness. Yeah. How would you play like? How did Keith Moon could do that? Um, <laughs> and also, like Joe Bonham, John Bonham was a brilliant judge because he just had a really, in, you know, he's just got a groove. You can just hear him, you know, two beats, and you kind of know, know, know it's him. Um, oh, brilliant! Um, and, uh, I suppose it, initially. It was, uh, I think, Maureen Tucker, you know, the, the Velvet Underground, oh, that sort of yeah. like very primal yeah. style of drumming, which is kind of the thing that, that got me going because, yeah. Right. Um, again, like yeah, well, Jenny also wanted to know which new bands do you like at the moment and who would you recommend listening to? Dry Cleaning. Dry uh, Cleaning. Dry Cleaning, yeah. Brilliant. Wow, new, she, where's it gone? Yeah. It's over here somewhere. They're good. Really oh, like them. Working Men's Club. You, she just they're mentioned good. that Working Men's Club. Yeah, but yeah. apparently they supported you at Heaton Park. Yeah, they're really good. Uh, who else? Fiji and me, Fiji and me, Adji, who've been around for ages, but they're still great. Um, I've got to have a look at my list now. <laughs> <laughs> 
to like um, look up the dry cleaning because I've not heard. I've not heard of dry. Cleaning. They're great. They're great. The kind. The, the best description of them is it's like um, a female fronted, female fronted fall uh, narrating a, a sitcom. <laughs> it's actually nothing like that. No one said it. <laughs> But they they are great. They are really great. Yeah. Uh, black black midi, black midi. Like the drummer out of black midi is amazing. He, oh, he's, really? uh, like, I don't really kind of usually go for that sort of stuff, but he's yeah, you know, he's great. He's really good. And uh, sea fever. Because oh. uh, that uh, is it sea 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 fever. Sea fever. Uh, <laughs> never heard of it. Yeah, that was Phil and Phil and Tom's one. They're good. <laughs> Yeah, definitely That's, check those guys out. Because, um, the last time I saw you, you DJed for them at yes, night. Yeah. And and so I played cool. dry cleaning. <laughs> oh, right. Because I remember, I remember when you were sort of like DJ. I mean, I've not heard any of those songs that you played before. Ah. So, <laughs> is that something that DJs actually um, <laughs> do? Do it's like they will play, strike. they will play. Music that no, maybe do. not many people have heard. <laughs> I, well, I do. I don't really call myself a DJ, though. It's kind of like, no, I, I've, read, I've got the book How to DJ Properly, and yeah. all, all I've learned is that I don't do it properly. Um, <laughs> probably because it's too hard. <laughs> Well, again, when, earlier when I said that you know you always have time for um, for fans, because um, that night, um, that evening at night and day, uh, you were DJing, and um, you actually saw like went off the stage to sign some memorabilia and that some was, sort of like, that was Alex. <laughs> and some, I think you also had like photos, um, like. Yeah. And, stuff. and I remember, so like, I think Jillian was getting a bit worried because the song is about to finish, and you, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. yeah. And I thought, oh, she, he just, he just loves, or like, you know, he's always have that time. Because maybe some people will probably just say, no, wait until I'm, I'm done with, with the show. But you're well, actually just uh, like, uh, you just. I was trying to say that, but in the end, it just seemed easier just to sign it. Did you say? <laughs> um, but um, I've got a few more um questions go, for you. Um, yes. Yeah, um, what are your sort of like advice? Do you have any advice, sort of like um, aspiring drummers out there? Or do you like? Oh, I've got lots of advice. Uh, the yeah. first one is learn how to sit properly. Seems a bit simple, that doesn't it? Learn how to sit properly, but it does make a world of difference from someone who doesn't didn't learn how to sit properly. Uh, it just makes life so much easier playing the drums. Um, okay. if, you, if you just learn how to, I can't relax, that's another thing. I mean, relaxation is very difficult, I uh, don't know why, but yeah, just learning how to sit, particularly, and how yeah. to do your arms um makes life wow. easier wow. <laughs> and, but the main thing is just enjoy it really because drumming's such a it's a great therapy if you've yeah you know if you if you can just go away and if you don't even if you don't know what you're doing just just bang away on the drum kit and you know i guarantee you will feel better when you stop doing it everyone around you will feel worse but you will feel a lot better uh, and then after that, just learning how it's kind of like doing a puzzle drumming. Once you've learned how to do like a very simple puzzle, then you can do a slightly more complicated one. And it's yeah. great because you can kind of like there's a feedback thing that you, you kind of get into that that is more. It's very instant gratification I've found than most musical instruments. Um, yeah, yeah. But just, yeah. just sort of relax and to enjoy learn it. how to sit properly. That's learn how, how learn that. how to learn sit, how sit properly. I cannot <laughs> emphasize that enough. And the other one, which I didn't believe was true, um, was I, I think it was was it Bird Purdy or somebody said 
get a comfy pair of shoes. And that's a good one as well. <laughs> not those ski boots. Not those no, hairy no, ski boots. No, not ski <laughs> boots. Don't <laughs> drum in ski boots. <laughs> right. um, another question I wanted to ask, this is not drumming related, but I okay. find it fascinating that you collect military vehicles yes. and you've got tanks yes so like and uh, apparently you saw like ride these tanks yes, <laughs> more, so, more. mend them so a... what do what do your neighbors think when because <laughs> they must be massive i mean it's like they're quite big but <laughs> my, my my next door neighbor uh does uh, world war ii trucks um and we're frequently mistaken for each other um, yeah, he has big World War II trucks. Um, it's fine, you know. Have, have, everyone thinks, oh, that's interesting, you know. It, yeah. it, it's, it's, I don't know, I thought <laughs> sometime <laughs> in the early 2000s, I thought I'd get a rock and roll eccentricity. Um, <laughs> ah, thanks, that'll do. Um, but but you've were... always been fascinated with sort of like military. As a kid, it. as a kid, I mean, there's a, there's a few over there. I made made little airfix models oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and stuff. And I always found tanks mysterious because you'd no idea what was inside them. Um, seems a bit crazy now, but so I thought I'd buy one just to find out what was inside one. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's 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 not it's not pretty and it's not comfortable. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you if you if you're thinking about getting one, save your money. <laughs> Get a drum kit. You you you'll be better off in the long run. Well, what I'm going to say is, like in the Philippines, we have this public transport called jeepneys. Jeepneys. Yeah, and I believe they're like um, converted to like military um, vehicles. So I think that's another reason for you to sort of like go to the Philippines and ride on another them. one. Another one. I could buy one, couldn't I? And then <laughs> yeah. spend go the rest of my life it. mending it. Yeah. Well, it's it's funny that because Japanese We can give the people Asian... rides to the tasty fish tip shop <laughs> thing. Yeah, that's true. In Jeepneys. Yeah, that's okay. We're just getting lots of ideas here. I'm <laughs> Well, another thing about jeepneys, though, in the 80s, when I was like a teenager and stuff, um, jeepneys in the Philippines were actually great for finding out amazing music. Cause, right, I can see yeah, that. It's, it's those, um, this is really strange, because apart from the radio station where they play, so like a lot of British, we call it new wave music, it's WXP 102 used to play um, those songs. Um, jeepney drivers used to have a brilliant so like sound system inside the chipney themselves yeah. and it doesn't matter like when i used to go to the university in the philippines it doesn't i i didn't really care whether i'll be late for lessons as long as i get the right chipney right where tunes they yeah. <laughs> it's like the right tunes and it, it's just amazing i just thought i'll, I'll tell you this because i'm pretty sure um those chipneys played a lot of new order songs at the time and that's how you, yeah that's how i got to discover it all, like a lot of your tunes thank you for jitneys jitneys right. yeah uh, well i've got another one it's all like um from mike edmondson um he said that uh he was at heaton park when new order were playing and dj tintin played rock the box by sylvester Yes, um, that's right. Yeah, rock the box. Yes. Yeah. What do you think about the drumming in that record? <laughs> well, it's a drum machine, isn't it? It's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know that one. Rock the box. Rock the so box. Yeah. The I think it is. I'm pretty. Is, is it a drum? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's a drum machine. Maybe it isn't. I like it anyway. That's one. Of, uh, that's a, That's one of my DJ set regulars. If you're coming to Halifax, so I'm probably be playing oh, that one yeah <laughs> yeah um do you want to sort of like invite everyone in case they're able to sort of like uh well, to come to halifax on thursday and see on me thursday. And, uh, the peace hall and see me and dave haslam talk about 
very similar things to what we've been talking about. And then watch me make a fool of myself while I try and DJ. Um, <laughs> I don't like your cup of tea. Um, <laughs> and of course, um, your book. Yeah. The Ooh, first handsome one. Handsome young devil. I, I know it is like, gorgeous. It's like, yeah. that's what I said. I posted it on Facebook. I said, look at that face. It's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I love the the photos and the captions that were in there. It was just really funny. <laughs> yes. But um, you actually released a second book during right. lockdown. Yeah. Will you be so like, will that be available? at the talk in Halifax? Uh, yes, and all good bookstores. Yes, it will be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's uh, sort of like another reason for me. I'll try to be there because it's just like, because my husband said they couldn't take me to Halifax, I'll have to make sure that there's trains going to go. What a charmer. I'll take you to Halifax. <laughs> Um, right, well, before we go, because it's nearly so like it's already over an hour, but um, Jonathan Preston just wanted to ask uh, uh, uh CD, um, no, he wanted to ask you CD, vinyl, download, or streaming. Oh, is that a question? Oh, that's a list, that's not a question. <laughs> I think we um, always like CD. Uh, I mean. <sighs> There's pros and cons to all of them. I mean, the, the big thing now is vinyl, which, you know, I, I, I like about vinyl because it's substantially, it, it, it's like you, you've got something and it's, yeah. like, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But I always remember uh, in the 70s, just before CDs came out, that vinyl was killing the planet because of all the oil and everything and they're like you're doing we're doing the world a favor by inventing cds so if you're going to be environmental environmentally friendly then downloads because they don't exist they don't anywhere <laughs> uh the only trouble is finding the thing where, where's it where's you know i've deleted my computer where have all my songs gone yeah <laughs> If you've got CDs in alphabetical order, like me, <laughs> yeah. you'll always be able to find them. But you're damaging the planet because they're made of plastic. It's There's no answer to that one. I mean, what sounds yeah. better? I mean, CDs sound better technically, but they're a bit clean sounding, I think. Vinyl, vinyl. It's like, you know, it's like, it's a coal fire versus a gas fire. If you know what <laughs> oh, that's I mean. a good, yeah, that's a good sort of like comparison, yeah. yeah. But then you, of course, you've got all those CDs behind you then, but then you said earlier that you haven't got a CD player anymore. No, I, no, I've, got a, I've, got a, I've got this beautiful selection. I have got no means of listening to it anymore. Ah, no, I have. No, I've just found the CD drive. Oh, I could, <laughs> I could listen to it through my computer and it'll sound about <laughs> as good as my mp3s <laughs> well, well before i go i just wanted to tell you that do, do you remember this book just joy devotion oh yeah yeah jennifer yeah. jennifer's book. Yeah, yeah. Jennifer, yeah dr jennifer um i actually quite liked what you said that conflicts will never break your heart the way that music can yeah, that is just. I think that's just really nice. I mean, I've never looked at the conflicts that way, anyway. So, <laughs> but, well, yeah, but they know. There's just no <laughs> way they can. There is no. There's no empathy with a conflict. <laughs> Whereas with music, there's a sort of whole emotional level. Yeah, particularly yeah. Joy Division, which is like, uh, kind of what I was referring to. That it's a very, very emotional thing uh, as opposed to a breakfast cereal which <laughs> which isn't which is... oh, it's nourishing <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> oh my god well thank you so much thank I'm you really really okay i've really, really talked about yeah. drumming much haven't we i've not, <laughs> used, I've not used the word <laughs> paradiddle once <laughs> or well, flam like... <laughs> well like i said it's like with ask the drummer it's actually so like 
not much technical drumming questions oh. involved. It's so like more about you know like the person and things. Thank but you. hopefully, yeah. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. And um, like if if anyone's able to so like you know, go to Halifax on Thursday the ninth of yeah. December. Weather permitting. Weather permitting. It? If it's going to snow, I think twice. But otherwise, oh come come on. <laughs> Come it's at the, peace, at the Peace Hall. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we used to go there because they have like a really good um, puzzle, jigsaw puzzle shop at the Peace Hall, one of, those, one of the shops there. Oh. But um, yeah, I stopped, I stopped doing puzzles now So because I'm more into record collecting now. So yeah. <laughs> That's another one that's pa painful on the eyes, the old jigsaw, if you're not careful. Unless yeah. you get the really big ones where the pieces are like that big. <laughs> Where, where's the fun in that <laughs> well once again thank you so thank much you. and you're just so awesome I, it, I just can't believe it you know like you, you've got you've given us your time <laughs> so, oh, that's all right <laughs> so um thank you and thank you. um you want to just say um goodbye thank you. to our friends Good, thank you for, for whiling away the afternoon morning or whatever it is where you are and uh, yeah see you soon well okay see ya yeah thanks Stephen. bye bye oh my god thank you so much um and thank you to everybody who's joined us live and um oh my god that was so good i don't know what to say now um but yeah um enjoy the rest, enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, keep an eye out for next week's um, guest. We're going to have another um, amazing guest next week. And um, always remember, love music, uh, love life, and love, love, love drummers, because they're just so awesome. Drummers are really are, they are awesome. And Stephen Morris is awesome. It's like, oh, I can't believe it. But yeah, thank you so much. Um, see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>